Dear brothers and sisters, many times you care about others more than they care about themselves. And others care about you more than you care about your own selves. And usually the reason being is that, you know, there, there's some sense of loyalty. That person did something for you or you love them because they're family or you love them because you know someone else that you love loves them. There are many different reasons. But when it comes to us and when we talk about our existence in the first place, there was a man sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that loved us before we even existed in this world. And that was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so when the expectation is placed upon us to love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than ourselves, though we've never seen him, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam already has shown that level of love for us before he'd seen us and before we'd even entered into this world. And we see that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a man that in this world when he prayed, when he made dua, when the Prophet sallallahu achieved success by religious and secular standards, the Prophet sallallahu was not satisfied because he still worried about his ummah. He still cried for his ummah. We see that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam missed us though he'd never seen us. We see that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment, where every person would be saying nafsi, nafsi, me, me, myself, the Prophet sallallahu would still use his one supplication for the sake of his ummah. But even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at some point cannot go beyond what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for him. At some point, your salvation will depend upon your own actions, will depend upon your heart, will depend upon whether or not you drew close to your Lord or not. And even the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most beloved creation to Allah, cannot do anything for you at that point. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a very powerful hadith that's narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qala alayhi salatu wa salam, inna ma mathali wa mathalu ummati. He says that verily the example of me, wa mathalu ummati, and the example of my nation. Kamathali rajul in istawqadanara. It's like the example of a man that lit up a fire, that started a fire. He says, fajalat al dawab wal farashu yaqa'na fiha. And so the, you know, the, the fireflies and the different flies started to jump into that fire. The fire was kindled and there were some flies that started to go towards that fire. The Prophet ﷺ says, And here I am grabbing you by your waist cloths, trying to stop you as you insist upon jumping into that fire. Meaning the Prophet ﷺ is trying to stop as many people as he can. But at the end of the day, some flies are going to make it through. Some people will make it through and they would still find themselves into the fire. Now, the issue here is that number one, even the Messenger ﷺ has his limits. Number two, that the Prophet ﷺ cared for you before you even existed in this world. Number three, at some point you have to hold yourself accountable. At some point, you have to watch yourself. So it was the Prophet ﷺ before you were even born. It was your parents as they conceived you, even as you were still in the womb of your mother, they cared for you. She altered her diet. She struggled to make sure that she was getting you the right nutrition, that she wasn't putting too much pressure on you. And when you're born into this world, you know, subhanAllah, when you're with your infants, anyone that has those little children, it's like a constant battle to stop your child from killing themselves. Right? They're either trying to swallow this toy or jump off of this thing or hit their heads on this thing. Or, you know, it's just a constant battle to stop them from hurting themselves. And they don't know any better. And you know that. So literally, you're grabbing them by the waist cloth. You're saying, stop. Don't do it. And you're trying to make them understand. And then as they get older, it's no longer the toys. It's no longer trying to jump off of something. It's the drugs and the relationships. And it's the poor choices that they make in life. And though they're teenagers and they think that they figured it out, they're still trying to swallow toys that will kill them. And you're trying to stop them. And you love them more than they love themselves. And as much as you try to stop them, they go forth. And unfortunately, what ends up happening sometimes 
is that young people in particular, subhanAllah, they get to a point where, you know what, you're just gonna have to mess up really, really, really bad, face the consequences of your actions, and then hopefully when you hit your low point, it's not a point from which you cannot recover. It gets to that point many times. No khutbah will save them. No YouTube clip, as amazing as it is, as inspirational as it is, it's not gonna do any good for them at that point. The examples that you draw, from friends and colleagues and, 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 and you know, people that you know, that's not changing them either. They're just insisting on making their mistakes and at some point they're gonna have to make those mistakes and then figure it out themselves. And there's nothing you can do about it. Because at some point, every human being, every individual has to be accountable. Every person has to look at themselves. And many times, subhanAllah, eventually, a parent becomes exhausted. A parent that's been trying to save their kids just says, you know what, I quit. You know, subhanAllah, one of my close friends who insisted upon disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and really was far away from the religion for a very, very long time and used to mess up constantly. His dad used to wait every single day looking out the window to see when he'd come home. And his dad sent him a text message one day. And subhanAllah, this is a true story. He sent him a text message and he said, Tonight is going to be the first night in five years that I'm just going to go to sleep. I've been looking out the window for five years. Tonight I'm not looking out the window anymore. And subhanAllah, that was the night he made tawbah. That was the night he returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, wait a minute. You're not going to look out anymore? You're not going to call anymore? You're not going to cry for me anymore? You've given up on me? At some point, everybody does. At some point, the da'i, as, as you know, the caller to Allah, as compassionate as he is about the person he's calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at some point, everyone will run out of gas. Everyone will get exhausted and just say, you know what, it's all you. I've tried to warn you. I've tried to call you. No, we probably don't have the tolerance and span of Nuh alayhi salam to call people for 950 years. But, you know, for us that span might be 95 minutes or 950 days. But at some point it's like, you know what, just do your thing. And at the end of the day, it comes back to us. Every single individual. Every single person stands before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala farda, all alone. وَكُلٌ آتِيهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ farda. Everyone stands in front of Allah alone. And you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an that on the Day of Judgment, He would say to us, اِقْرَأْ كِتَابَكَ كَفَى بِنَفْسِكَ الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكَ حسيبة. Go ahead and read your book. You already know. You don't need to be held accountable. You don't need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell you where you went wrong or how you messed up. You already know. Everyone will come to know. Now the thing is in this world, when people give up on you, is it because they stopped caring about you or because they stopped loving you? No. It's because they realize that they're sick of caring more about you than you care for yourself. You know what, if you're gonna insist on ruining yourself, go ahead and ruin yourself. At some point, I can't love you if you don't love yourself. I can't care for your salvation if you don't care for your own salvation. And sometimes it hits very close. Nuh alayhi salam could not save his son. Can you imagine how demoralizing that is to a person's da'wah? For 950 years, only 80 or so people took shahada. That's less than a shahada per 10 years. And he's leaving and subhanAllah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is causing this great flood to come, his son is standing back. And he calls upon his son like, you know, what are you doing? Come on. And you know, when his own son, when his own wife turn away, SubhanAllah, what can you do at that point? Lut alayhi salam, who leaves his people and goes and calls another group of people. And you would think that with everything that's happening with the people of Lut alayhi salam, look, at least I can come home and talk to my wife. But at some point, Lut can't save his wife. And at some point, Ibrahim can't save his father. And at some point, the Prophet وسلم, even Rasulullah cannot save his uncle Abu Talib. And says to him, look, give me one sentence. Just give me La ilaha illallah so I can argue on your behalf on the Day of Judgment. But without that, I have nothing. I'm completely disarmed. At some point, you can't go further than that. And subhanAllah, that's the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed things. 
And at some point you die and you go to your grave. And the Prophet ﷺ says something very powerful. He says alayhi salatu wasalam in a hadith from Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, يَتْبَعُ الْمَيِّتُ إِلَىٰ قَبْرِهِ ثَلَاثَةً There are three th things that follow you to your grave. As you're being carried to your grave, the Prophet ﷺ is giving us the image. As you're being carried to your grave, there are three things that will follow you. He says, أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَعَمَلُهُ His money, his family, and his deeds. Now how is it that your money follows you to your grave? People will be there as the ulama say because you know maybe you were rich, maybe you were a giving person, maybe you were someone that was well known in society. Your status means something even at your janazah. People are coming to your grave, people are walking behind the janazah, the family is there. And unless you are the worst person in the world, everyone says amazing things about you when you die. You know if you read, every eulogy sounds alike, right? Best friend I've ever had, greatest son, purest heart, best daughter, right? I could always count on her. I could always call her when I... It sounds the same every single time because you have to be a horrible human being for people to not be able to muster up anything good to say about you when you pass away. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, when even the Sahaba, even the companions are sitting and a janazah passes by and they speak good of him and the Prophet ﷺ says, Wajabat. He says it three times, it's mandatory that Allah will enter that person into Jannah by virtue of your good testimony. But when a person, when a janazah walks by and the Sahaba have nothing good to say about that person, and their mentioning is evil, the Prophet says, Wajabat. Hellfire became mandatory for that person. Because if you're that horrible of a person that people can't say good things about you when you die, you are really a bad person. You're really a horrible person. But on the other hand, most people, even when they're bad, will have people say great things about them when they pass away. But here's the thing. The Prophet ﷺ says that as you're followed by your family, as you're followed by your money, as you're followed by you know, your actions, your deeds, the Prophet ﷺ says, فَيَرْجِعُ إثنان. They put you in the grave. Two things leave you in your grave. The Prophet ﷺ says, يَرْجِعُ إثنان وَيَبْقَى واحد. The only thing that stays with you is your deeds. Your family, your money, your mansion, they leave you in that grave. And the Messenger ﷺ said that you would hear the footsteps, the last footsteps of the person that was attending your janazah, subhanAllah, as they're walking away from you. You would actually hear the footsteps leaving away from you, leaving you to your grave. No money can benefit you at that point. And you know all the eulogies and the great things that people say about you? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in an authentic hadith that when a person is in his grave and the people come and they start to say, Ya Sayyida, you know, what a great person he was. What an amazing person he was. The angels poke at him and say, Ahakadha kunt. Was that really you? Are you really what they say about you? Are you really that great person, that amazing person that they say that you were? But eventually even the mention moves on. And you know what? As much as your family might love you, and as amazing of a person as you might have been, eventually they have to move on with life too. No one loved anyone in this world the way the Prophet ﷺ loved Khadija radiallahu anha. But the Prophet ﷺ didn't sit around and, you know, and, and, and cry for the rest of his life to a point that he didn't do anything. He was still productive. Though his heart remained with Khadija, and his dua remained with Khadija, and his gifts remained with the friends of Khadija, and so on and so forth. His loyalty remained, but the Prophet ﷺ moved on. And let's face it, most of us are not, or in fact all of us are not the Prophet ﷺ, and we will not have that loyalty and devotion that he had to Khadija radiallahu anha. Eventually your family moves on as well. And you don't have the mansion anymore. You don't have the praise anymore. You don't have the money anymore. You don't have any of that. And the Prophet ﷺ says that when a person is in his grave, he's visited by, a per, by, by another individual. And when he sees that individual, someone will be visited or some people will be visited by a beautiful human being. And they would look at that person and they would say, MashaAllah, man ant? Who are you? Said, al waj la yati illa bi khayr. That face is not coming except with good news. Yeah, I've never met you before, but whoever you are, you must be coming with good news. 
Because you just look like someone that's delivering good news. Man ant, who are you? What is this face that comes with good news? And the Prophet ﷺ says that that person would respond and say, Ana amaluka salih. I am your good deeds. I am your righteous deeds. I am your salah. I am your sadaqa. I am your good character. I'm your manners. I'm your love. I'm your compassion. I'm your mercy. I'm your good deeds. And on the other hand, we ask Allah to protect us. Some will be confronted with a very ugly individual. And the person would say, even as he's in the grave, he looks at that person and he says, this is a face that does not come except to bring bad news. You're definitely not here for a good reason. You're not here to make me feel better. And it would be a person's deeds as well.